Welcome, everybody. I'm working on Robot C, and um, I'm using Robot C with an EV3 brick. And what I'm going to do is do sort of a um, practice about how do you read sensor values and do something about it. Now, in the context of this demo, I've set up all the main sensors. So um, from port number one, I have the touch sensor. So this is your touch sensor. You can tell it's got the little red X that you can touch. So it tells you if it's being pressed or not. It also counts the number of times it's been pressed. Okay. Port number two, we're going to use the sonar sensor. If you're one of my students and you recognize this little attachment, you might want to talk to me because I just raided a box. It had no name on it. And this is like a sonar sensor. It will uh, register distance away from the sens sensor. This could be really good for sumo bot kind of challenge. Uh, my next sensor is a light sensor and a light slash color sensor. And so um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, this helps us detect the amount of light, both ambient light, radiated light. It also can detect different colors. <laughs> Finally, we have the gyro sensor. I'm not even sure how much I'll get to it, but I want to just kind of walk through all the setup. Now, each of these are attached to a different port, and it's port 1 through 4, S1 through S4 in the order in which I uh, did it on the way I showed it and introduced you to the sensors. So what I'm going to do is go to Robot C. I've created a program called Sensors Practice. And the first thing I need to do is set up my sensors. So I go to Motor and Sensor Setup. I'm in Sensors. OK. So the first one I said was the Touch Sensor. It's an EV3. You'll notice it says right here these are EV3. If you have the old school sensors, the, the NXT ones, you can even access those and use them. We're going to use the ones that come with the EV3. So sensor one is our touch sensor. Sensor two is the ultrasonic sensor. And we have sensor mode. So we have touch mode, buff mode. Um, we have distance or listen. So we have different modes that we can look at. Uh, for example, on the color, we could do reflected color, which will actually bounce uh, light and detect it. Ambient will just pick up what's there. So you might want to look at the different sensor modes and what they mean. So that is something worth looking at. But let's just go ahead and code a couple of things related to the touch sensor. Before we do, we're going to play a sound file. So that you can, we're going to use our sound files to determine uh, what's been happening. So one of the things you should note is if you go into the Robot C folder under Program Files, you can. You know, I'll show you the path. It's basically Program Files, Robot Matter, Robot C Development Environment, EV3 System Files, Sounds. There's a list of all the different sounds that we have available. For example, backing alert, backwards, black, bip, blip one. So if you want to play a sound file, it's as simple as play sound file. You make your parentheses, semicolon, and in quotation marks, you, you write the name of the sound file. So let's try blip one, for example. Blip one. We're going to go ahead and download it and test it out. Of course, it helps if you connect your robot. So I'm going to connect it, try it one more time. We're going to try air break instead. It might just be that the sound file is too quiet. Um, I should also, of course, save my file, download it, play it again. Did you hear that? All right, made a sound. You want to try some of the other sounds? You can take a look at the different ones. We'll try backing alert, for example. I'm just going to copy it right out of here. Paste it inside. Backing alert. Actually, I needed to download that again. All right, so there's our backing alert sound file. Okay, what I want to do is I want to wait and not play a sound um, uh, or not even start my program until the touch sensor is bumped. 
but I'll just put touch sensor is pressed. Okay, so if you're wanting to wait, um, what you do is you can create a while loop like so. And a while loop is a way of just repeating something until some kind of a condition is met. By the way, if you want to clean up your code, like you notice here, the little curly brackets on a different line, you can always just click fix formatting, cleans it up. Okay, so I want to wait until the sensor is bumped, but I'm not quite sure what to do. Now, this is what I went through this morning because I knew you could do this. So what I wanted to look is text functions. So if you look on here, you'll see sensors, and you just expand it out, and you can look for the sensor you want to do. So there's touch sensor. So I'm going to click this open. We have get bumped, we have get touch value, and we have reset bumped value. So we have three different commands we can use, okay? I'm thinking maybe it's get touch value, but I'm not sure. So one of the things I can do is I can drag it out, right click on it, and choose go to definition declaration. And right here, I can see all of my touch sensor functions. If you see a thing that says bool, it means it's going to tell you true or false. Bool is just true or false, and um, in what we do is we get the touch value. And inside of here, this is just a fancy way of saying that's the sensor value. And it's going to say whether that it's being touched or not. So we're going to wait until it's touched. So we are going to use the get touch value, but watch how I do it. So I'm going to wait as long as the get touch value is not touched and that is sensor one so get touch value it looks at whatever's in the parentheses yeah there's two parentheses here s1 refers to sensor port number one this exclamation mark here means not while we're not getting a touch value on sensor one i'm just going to put here do nothing as long as touch sensor is not being pressed. Okay? And then, as soon as the touch value is pressed, we're going to be out of this loop. And as soon as we're out of it, we're going to play the sound file and wait long enough to be able to hear the sound file. And let's just see if that works now. Now, before I do it, I just want to show you Notice we have not heard the sound yet. We're waiting for this little sensor right here to be pressed. Oh, what happened? Did I not download? Did I not start the program? Probably want to start the program. Now we'll do that again. Where did my touch sensor go? Here it is. There it is. You hear that? Played the sound after I touched it. And, of course, if you learn any lesson from just now, the lesson is make sure you download it and start it before you test it. It's not going to work otherwise. So this is a great way of waiting until the button is pressed. So your touch sensor now can act like a start uh, button. And that way you can put that in a convenient location. It's a lot easier to touch than pressing start. So you can start the program and then wait to start it running until you press that button. It's a very handy thing. Now, loops are very important here. So what I want to do now is let's play around with the touch sensor a little more, and let's just, um, every time that such, the touch sensor is pressed, play a sound. Well, we have a problem here. And the problem here is this task main what happens is we start at the top, we run each line of code at a time. The only reason why we waited for the touch sensor was because we had this while loop here. So at this point, it played the sound, it waited, and then it was done with task main. So if we want it to continually wait and continually, quote unquote, listen for a touch press, we're going to have to put this all in a loop. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make an infinite loop. And so we're going to just do while 
for an infinite loop, what I like to do is I'll put while true. And true just means true. And remember what I said on the while loop, it's based on a Boolean value, a true or false value. So this is saying while not true, while we're not touching the sensor. This is just saying always. While true, true is always true. All right, so we're just going to loop infinitely. While we're in the loop, we're going to check to see is the touch sensor being pressed. If so, play a new sound. Ouch. Okay? So if we want to check to see if a, a sensor is being pressed, we're going to put if. And it looks like this. If. Inside of here, we put something that can be true or false. Let's go back. Remember we had that get touch value? If it's being touched, then it returns a true. So I'm going to just copy that and paste it right here. So if get touch value S1, in other words, if it's being pressed, then we're going to play another sound file. This time, we're going to play ouch. And we're going to wait one second. Now, this wait one second might slow it down a little bit. So what I'm thinking of doing instead is just wait one uh, millisecond, and we'll wait about 100 milliseconds, so a tenth of a second. Not a lot of time, but because we're in a while loop and we're always looping, I think we're pretty good. Um, actually, this should probably go outside of the if check. We'll just see if this works. We might have to adjust it a little bit. So if we're touching the sensor, we're going to play the sound file. Ouch. Let me make sure there is the ouch sound file. I thought there was. Yeah, ouch with the capital O. I probably better capitalize that to be safe. Let's test it out again. I'm just going to save the file, fix the formatting to clean it up. Download the robot, get my window here, press start. Now that it's started, remember it won't begin until I press it. There's our backup. That's a lot of ouches. Did you see that? I was holding it down and it kept saying ouch, ouch, over and over. That's where that um, bump or touch sensor mode might change things. Let's see if it does. So I got to exit debugger, just close this, or I could have closed that little window. I'm going to go to motors and sensor setup, and this time I'm going to change it from touch to bump. And that should be, uh, it has to have been pressed and then let go. Let's see if that works that way. Touch sensor. And I held it down. Well, it doesn't seem to be doing much other than I've really hurt this poor robot. Um, yeah, maybe I should have a wait. I don't know, maybe that's about 500 milliseconds. Half a second. Let's pass it 500 milliseconds. Exit debugger. Save changes. Download again. Press start. Okay, at least this time by waiting a little bit longer, waiting 500 milliseconds, it doesn't keep playing the sound over and over and over again. Okay, now if I increase the time in here, 
which is outside of the if, that will just make it so that it's not sampling the touch sensor as frequently. If I change this to like 1,000 milliseconds, one second, it will only check. Basically, as soon as it's done checking, you'll have to wait an entire second before it will check that again. So you do need to adjust your times on here. Very important. Um, but now you can run your program and you can test other sensors as well using an if statement. For that, you'll have to wait for my next video. Thank <laughs> you.